platform for this umbrella group to to support one guy in his off time doing it anyway. <laughs> but uh, at least that has a formal structure for which it should continue should the bus uh, find its mark. Right, so how does MathJax work? Uh, there are four major components to MathJax. There are what are called the different jacks. And I think of this as sort of like uh, the speaker's wires, jacks, hooking one wire into another, or the game of jack where you're picking up several different jacks at a time and putting them in a little bag. So these jacks are input jacks, are things that take input from the page. And currently we have two. We have one for tech notation and one for math and L notation. There's nothing stopping us from doing um, any, uh, for example, ASCII math notation or mathematical notation or any other kind of a notation. The uh, framework is there to make your own input format or input processor for this called a jack and, and use that. Uh, there are different output jacks. One is the HTML CSS one, which is the one that most that gets used if you don't have MathML support. It'll also output to MathML directly if the browser supports it. And there's a new one that you are the first people to get to see. That's an SVG based output jack and there's some real advantages to that I'll talk about in my show. Uh, and there's an internal format, which is MathML essentially in JavaScript objects, uh, plus a few very small um, uh, adjustments to add a few features that Tech had that MathML didn't have. So uh, the goal was to continue to produce what was essentially uh, Tech output. Uh, MathJax was basically an implementation of Appendix G in the Tech book. Uh, JS Math was that. And, and it followed really the tech pipeline. And this is a very different approach, but we wanted to make sure that the output was as indistinguishable from tech output as we could. And so we added a little bit to MathML under, under the hood in order to make that possible. And there's a central hub that glues all of this stuff together. It has libraries for the object-oriented programming model, AJAX code, DOM support, so on, queuing and signaling, um, and startup code, and so forth. Uh, so there is those four different components to MathJax. What does a viewer see? Viewer reading the page has nothing special to do. The page should just work for them. It may be slow, but it will. <laughs> it works. Um, no plugins or downloads, not even fonts anymore. JS Math had fonts that you should install and we put up nice little uh, warning messages that everybody hated. And uh, I'm sure you've seen them in, uh, in the notebook. Uh, and uh, people would say, well, how can I turn that off? And I would say, you don't want to turn it off because you want the people to install the font so that it works faster for them. So but they are unhappy about the message, so, but they're unhappy about it being slow. And so we would have these little fights. So uh, we don't have that. Um, it uses web-based fonts now. It uses sticks fonts if you have them installed locally. It uses web-based fonts, which are um, copies of uh, CM fonts, the text CM fonts if the browser supports web-based fonts, which now almost everybody does. Uh, when we first started MathJax, not very many did. When I did JS Math, nobody did, uh, except for IE in its confusing way. Uh, so we'll use web-based fonts if you can, if they can, and if not, it uses image fonts like JS Math did. And these are, of course, the largest portion of the MathJax distribution, just as they were the JS Math distribution, because there are 30,000 little image files, one for each each character in each font in every in about 14 different sizes. Uh, and that's big. And I would really like to get rid of that, and we're almost at the point where that's possible. Uh, the remote device, the mobile devices now support uh, the web fonts. That's a big win. Uh, everybody, uh, all the major browsers are doing it for enough versions that, that it's possible, I think, to retire this, except for two situations. One is if you're using a local file in Firefox, its security model won't let you access fonts that aren't in the same directory as the file. Um, and that's one place where the, the image fonts still get used. You can avoid that by installing the sticks fonts and, and avoid that. So that's not really a serious issue. And there's a, a similar one with Internet Explorer uh, that's also not a big deal. So image fonts will eventually disappear. It's not quite ready yet. No font warning messages anymore because you get you something that works. No control panel, uh, but there is a contextual menu item. If you haven't 
used your right mouse button on the, on a typeset math to do so, you'll get some options there. So here is MathJax in action. This is an image produced by Tech. That's MathJax up above. You can see there are some minor differences. There are some spacing differences. The uh, the two is a little bit higher, which makes the root be one size larger. Um, we separated these things a little bit more because they're small sizes on the screen. This is hard to see. So there are a few minor adjustments. Uh, one of the key features is that you can do this without losing the image quality, uh, whereas the this one pixelates. You can see the rough edges around it. Um, and this one does not. These are uh, well. It looks like the screen the screen pixelation is is effective. Mine is beautiful here. This is the web. Well, these may be the local versions, but if I do the web fonts, it would be the same. Uh, what did you use to get the image? That it was just DVI PNG or something. I, I made it long ago, and I don't recall. Um, you'll also see this if we were to print this. If I just take a PDF version of this, so it's a, that's that's a scaled version. All right. We open this in preview. Here is the, uh, the, the, this one scales very well, whereas the, oh, it's not on the page, sorry, let me uh, reduce this, I'll get, make sure I can have the image up there as well. The image version of this, if we scale this up, all right, all right, oops, I don't know where that went, printed someplace. <laughs> but if we, <laughs> But if we scale this one up, this is the images, and of course they're, they're bad for printing, whereas the, uh, the ones that have jacks are nice. So those are some of the reasons why you would prefer to use map jacks if you can. All right, uh, here's a little test lab where you can come in and experiment with various tech code. You type tech code here, you hit type set or hit return, and it will uh, produce new math there. I've got a couple of examples in it. So here is MathJax producing you know, this stuff. Here. If we change the code, made it to you know, whatever it is here, and we type that in, it should uh, look. So you can experiment with math and see what, what uh, how it looks. Um, there are a couple of controls to let you change. For example, this is using requesting local tech fonts. We could look at it using the sticks fonts. Here are the sticks fonts. I personally prefer the look of the tech fonts, probably just from familiarity. Um, but the sticks fonts are there. Um, this is uh, this is the web-based fonts. Web-based fonts there. So that should look essentially the same as this. Uh, we could Say don't have don't use any fonts and don't allow web fonts and that's the image fonts so it's pretty close for all of them. Um, let's put these back. This lets you select what output mode you're going to use. I could put native MathML, but of course Safari, which I'm running, doesn't have it, so it would not produce anything. But I will show you the SVG one. This is the SVG output. That's now a, a, an SVG image. Um, all of the letters are done by paths. Uh, one of the reasons to do this is that if you look at the timing for this one, 0 0.007 seconds, if you go back to this, this one and, and look at it, it's uh, you know, some, two or three times faster in Safari. In Internet Explorer, it's five or six times faster for a single equation, much faster for Page with multiple ones. When you do SVG, there's no fonts in that. You're actually no fonts in that. every character. That's every character is in. Is but that's how SVG fonts work. Okay. Um, SVG fonts are that way, although they would be integrated a little bit more with the text system than this is. But there's no speed loss to that. In fact, it's a speed gain for technical reasons. But if I do this with fonts, I have to ask the browser about the size of everything. And in asking for the size, it has to render the page to figure out where everything is. And this is why Internet Explorer has gone awful slow, because not only does it render the page, it renders the entire page, not even just the little piece that I pulled it and isolated off in a little um, you know, absolutely positioned thing, which is all that will change, change the entire page. So it, it makes it polynomial in, in the number of equations you have on there, uh, how bad it gets. 
this will not require that because it will not be asking the browser to be measured. So that's going to be a big win for, for IE. IE9 supports SVG, so we can look at it here. So here is an HTML version of this that's being typeset in you know, around uh, 0.09 uh, seconds. And if we go to the SVG version, the first one will load the libraries and things. That will take longer. But here it is doing it at 26, 33, I can't remember that. 26 or 28. And so that's substantially less for this, for this one equation. Uh, the more complicated it is, the more the savings are going to be. The more equations there are on the page, the more the same. So I think this is going to give us a, 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 a substantial increase for it. Can you still click and see the underlying LaTeX when you use SVG? Um, at the moment, the menu stuff isn't hooked into it. It's still in process, but yeah, you'll get exactly the same. Nice. Yeah. All right, go back to this one. You can see the MathML here. This one actually has a display directly for it. So this is, the, this is what the tech was converted to in order to produce this. So at least that's one place you can do tech to mathematical conversion if you want. All right, so that's something you can play with. We've got a bunch of examples here, you know, about complicated things uh, with a lot of nested fractions and so forth. Uh, if you turn it on to the SVG, you get there it is. There is a slight difference in the quality you know, the anti-aliasing in SVG is for image type anti-aliasing, and the font anti-aliasing is slightly different, and it's not quite as clear. Just the shade, and there are people who will complain about that. All right, so that's the lab. What is the tech support? Math Jack's tech input implements nearly all the plain tech math macros, um, but not things like stretchable glue or rulers or low-level box commands and H line and those kind of things. Does them at a fairly high level, not all the underlying. It doesn't have all the programming ifs and all that stuff. Um, it does some of the standard tech macros, but of course there are a huge number of packages for LaTeX, and I don't have them all, but it does for Active Square Root and so forth. And the environments like the AMS environments for gathers, lit and align, and so forth. So all that stuff is there. Um, some extensions to get you access to things in the web page. So. For example, you can ask for any Unicode character, even if it's not in the fonts that MathJax provides. You can access things like uh, CSS IDs and, and so forth on parts of the equation, uh, color, and that kind of stuff. Um, there's a complete list of the macros if you were, care about them. How to use it. In your pages, you first load MathJax.js via a command like that, a script command that says, load mathjax.js. Uh, for those of you who have been, who have looked at mathjax early on, we've changed the way the configuration is done. You now add a config parameter onto here that loads a configuration file. We provide a bunch of pre-configured uh, uh, operations that include a lot of the code, so there's only one file to be downloaded instead of a lot of little files. Uh, so this one is the one for tech that has the AMS stuff in, built into it and uses only the HTML output. In your page, you include stuff just like it would be in tech. Here, we're using the uh, backslash open paren and the backslash close paren delimiters, which are the LaTeX delimiters. You can use the square brackets for, lock for display mode math. You can also use the double dollar signs. Single dollar signs are not enabled by default because single dollar signs are used too much in text and uh, for people who are putting this up for blogs and wikis and things, you don't want to have somebody saying, I spent $12 on this but only $5 on that. You have the stuff in between those two dollar signs show up in math mode without their thinking about it. So dollar signs are off by default, but you can enable them if you want. But you can set your own delimiters, so there's parameters to let you put anything you want in those things. Here's a source file that includes everything you need in order to get output from MathJax. And this is the result. Oh, sorry, I thought I had the result of that. I guess not. Sorry about that. I'm sure I have. I must have forgotten to link it in. All right. Well, uh, you'll see others. 
So here is a, uh, oh, it was essentially the example I had earlier. Uh, the combined configuration files are somewhat new. There are four pre-configured ones. One is, this is the kitchen sink one. This includes the tech input stuff, all the AMS stuff, the MathML input stuff, and the HTML and the MathML output, and it'll pick whichever one your, your browser can support. So this is kind of like as much as possible gets loaded for this. So if you don't know what you're doing, you load this one and whatever you try should work. Um, the tech AMS one does not include the MathML input stuff and it doesn't include the MathML output stuff. This is for guys like the AMS who want it to look like tech. They don't want it to run uh, a MathML uh, output in Firefox because it doesn't look like tech. It's true. So that's one that forces uh, the tech output. Um, here's one that uses MathML input but doesn't load all the tech stuff. But it does do the choice for MathML input or output because not everybody supports MathML output, so you really want to be able to support everybody. It's an accessibility one. If you're interested in this accessibility, talk to me um, and I'll tell you about that. All four of these come in two flavors, a plain and a full version. The uh, MathJax is designed to load pieces on demand rather than having to load everything up front. And there are good reasons for that and bad reasons for that. This has good, good, it has advantages and disadvantages. Its advantages are that the initial load is less. Uh, if you're on a page that's not going to use math, um, you know, you just load math jacks and it says, oh, there's no math on the page, nothing else gets loaded. Uh, but if you've got math on the page, it has to then stop and download a bunch of stuff before math shows up. And some people are unhappy about that. But if you say, okay, I'll load everything up front, those people who have it on a blog or something that only uses math once in a while say, oh, all of my pages load really slow because your math jacks are too big. And so there's a trade-off. It depends on what you want to do. If you're on a site that has a lot of math, most of the pages have math, load the full one because that will be one file that gets all of the stuff you need at one time. That's faster than going out and getting a whole bunch of little files one at a time. Um, but if you're going to be using the uh, wiki or something that only has a few pieces of math in it now and again, use the, un use the plain version. That loads the smaller amount of it and will download pieces as necessary. So there's a trade-off for those. Um, they're described more at that link. Configuring math decks. There are a bunch of uh, ways to modify the configurations that we have. There are a lot of options for what you can, how you can change, like turning on and off the dollar signs. So you can uh, configure math in the uh, math decks in the web page itself. So the way you do that is by including another script tag in here, but not a, an honest script tag. This is a script tag of type text xmathjax config. And this will not get run automatically by the browser. Mathjax will look for it later and run it at the appropriate time. If you had this script in here before Mathjax was loaded, you couldn't call Mathjax to, to do its configuration. It couldn't do the things it would need to do because it's not there yet. It hasn't been loaded. And if you load Mathjax first, it's going to start working before your next scripts run. So your configuration wouldn't show up at the right time. So we solved that by having a script tag out here that, that you put in first that doesn't get run, and MathJax will find it and run it at the appropriate time. Um, you can include any of the configuration pra parameters in the def described in the default parameter file. Um, any JavaScript code actually can be run there. So you can set up macros for customization. So complete list of the configuration options uh, are on our website. Uh, so here's what a configuration that is inline looks like. This is the, this, this is the script of type text x mathjax config. Mathjax hub config is a call that puts things in for mathjax to work with. Here we're configuring the tech to jax preprocessor and turning on the dollar signs and leaving the slash ends as well. Um, and we're going to process escapes so we can put slash dollar sign to prevent the dollar sign from being used as a blender. Uh, we're still loading the other config file here uh, and that stuff is getting done uh, after this config loads that modifies the configuration. Here I've changed these over to dollar signs so now this would actually display properly. Um, you can put your customization into a local file. You may be interested in doing this with Sage, for example, if you were linking to this to our service, 
our CDN, our cloud server, but you want it to have local customization. You can't modify the files over on the cloud server, but you would like to adjust their results. So you can create, well, in this case, this is, this is one where you're hosting your own server. You uh, modify a file in, in the config directory, say make a local local.js file, put your configuration commands in that, end it with this command that tells MathJax it's done, and then add a second parameter onto the call that configures MathJax. And I'll show you that in, in place. Here is the local config file. And then this is the uh, modification. You add comma local local onto the end of that, and it will pick up out of your config directory the thing local local.js and run that after having run the tech AMS. So that would modify the uh, predefined ones. You can do this even with the CDN if you're using that for the main distribution. In this case, you create a file somewhere on your server, someplace that, that you can serve this out, um, put your configuration in that, and that with the load complete command. Here you have to actually give your, your, the URL you're going to be using to access this file. Um, and uh, the other one, if, you went, if we go back to the previous one, there was a shorthand here. This MathJax part says, the server that I'm getting MathJax from. That's no longer the server you're getting math checks from. You're getting your local configuration from a completely different server. So you have to specify it explicitly. So there it is. Uh, and then you would include that. Here is a source that loads from our CDN the latest copy of math checks, configures it with that tech AMS one, and with your custom one. So that's a way that you could allow people to use our server but still have your own customization. I know there's a lot of configuration possibilities. I'm going through this because you are technically applying people and I want you to know sort of what the possibilities are. Finally, you can make a completely custom figure configuration like you could with JSMath. There's a default file, uh, a fake default that has all the customization parameters in it and then just use config equals default and we'll go out and get this one. Uh, and then you can load it when you load MathJax. The predefined config files include not just the configuration, but actually the code that those configuration files would draw in. So they're actually better than doing this in the sense that there's only one file that needs to be downloaded. Whereas if you modify this one and put in your own jacks and so forth, it'll get those individually. Uh, so this means the combined files will load faster and cause fewer network transfers than doing your own. Uh, so it might be better to do Take one that's pre-exists and do your customization in the local file instead. But it exists. You can do it entirely up to you. And that's what you would look like that you just have to take it as default. All right, so that's configuration. Here is the default file. It shows you a lot of these different kinds of things you can do and a lot of comments in there to say uh, how to do it. So I will have to do that. Converting from JS math to MathJax, something we were doing yesterday the other day. Conversion should be easy. If you're using the easy load, which is sort of like the default config file that we have here, simply replace it with MathJax using the default and specify the configuration in there. That would be easy to do. If you were loading JS Math directly and using the span class and, the, and so forth, which is what uh, Sage does, you would replace these. This is what we have to do yet this afternoon. Replace the span class with with script type equals math, so forth. This span and div was a nice idea. Turns out to have several drawbacks. One of the drawbacks is that the data between the span and the end span is parsed by the browser. And so things like less than signs get turned into tags and so forth. And that causes problems, especially if this is in like a wiki environment or something where people aren't putting those, putting the, the tags around them and aren't thinking about tags at all. They're just typing it in their math gets messed up. Um, script is automatically C data, and so the interior of that does not get mangled by the browser. That's the key difference. Uh, there are a number of issues with that. And particularly if you're gonna go with MathML, you wanna have it be C data because the, you don't want the browsers trying to, uh, to parse those tags. Especially the self-closing tags that are part of XML, not part of HTML, very hard to get that data back out once the browser has munged up. Uh, 
so the script uh, here, instead of a span and a div, is really to preserve the content without the browser's interference. Yeah. Quick question about that, because this may have been something easier to chain off of. Um, are there any restrictions on the type names? Can I pick the type something? Name, you can pick anything you want. These are MIME types. So if you are doing your own, you should really do like we did test that uh, x dash something or other. And I, I didn't do that. I should really have done x mass slash x tech. But I, 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 I decided I wasn't going to bother with that because A, nobody's going to be putting these in. And B, I mean, the, the preprocessors put these in for you. So uh -huh. it's hidden behind the scenes to most people. So I didn't do it. And those who are, are going to do it by hand, I don't want to have to put all that X, X dash stuff in. So you can add, technically you can put anything you want here. As long as it's not you know, text mm -hmm. JavaScript, it will not be run by the browser. Okay. That may be a better place for me to hide some information. JMOL, thank you. Yeah, yeah I, I, and I, I looked high and low to find something that was both legal and uh, that, would, that would pass validation mm -hmm. and that actually worked. And it, it sort of does actually make sense. I mean, tech is a script of yeah. some sort. So I think it makes sense to, to use that extension. And that's why I'm hiding the JMOL scripts. Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> so, but do think carefully about the type that you want to use that is not going to conflict with something else okay. in the future and use the X's if, if you can. Thanks. Um, uh, so, and the JS math extension simply goes through and turns these into those, uh, basically. But, of course, the browser will have already dinged it up. So all the issues about less than signs and so forth are problems uh, with any of the pre-processed versions. Something like Sage should be putting out these things directly. That will preserve all of the uh, content without any trouble. Can we have Sage move to that new script style? Yeah, that's one of the things but I would right, like to do this afternoon. But still, old worksheets that might have output in them Still, if, include you, the if you include the JS math one there, it will not interfere yeah. with her. Yeah, absolutely. And in fact, the one that we're doing, not only will do the span and divs, but it's doing the dollar signs and the other things too, because we loaded the configuration file that has those configured in it. Okay. So we so get we'll, everything. So we'll just move to the script as, as better output, but it won't cause any problems. It should not cause problems. We may want to turn off the other preprocessors, because it's possible it could then, it could take something that, that it should, but uh, you know, we can, yeah, we can right do that. And uh, if you want it, we can make, in fact, a custom combined config file for you. Um, the tools are all there to, to make that, so that if we decide exactly what we want in a config file, we can do the crushing it yeah. down to one file. Uh, and there's no need for the old JS math process and process before and so forth. That's all done by MathJax automatically. We took those out yesterday when we were working on that. All right, some caveats. I've already mentioned these, really. Uh, when you're using the tech embedded in HTML, single dollars are off by default. I already talked about that. HTML special characters, the less than sign in particular, but the greater than sign and the ampersand in some instances can cause problems for the tech to jack preprocessor. That's why the script things are there. Usually, if you put spaces around them, that will prevent the browser from fussing with them, but you have to know that, and not everybody does. And comments in the tech code cause problems for our favorite browser, Internet Explorer, because Internet Explorer completely damages the page before JS Math gets to see it. It takes out all the carriage returns and replaces them by spaces. And since tech comments are carriage return delimited, what happens is the first comment comments out the rest of the tech. And so you've got to be more careful with that. Uh, JS Math has a special thing where if you put a BR actually in the tech code, the browser will see that, retain that, and I can pull it out and put a carriage return back in. And so that's a fix. You've got to use comments in your tech code, end them with a, with a BR when you send it out to, to JS Math. So that's a, or we could have Sage uh, uh, do a replacement on new lines with this. So that would work. So details about that. Yeah. So that shows up even when you put it in a script? No, it's not if not. It's only the preprocessors that where this okay. default. The script fixes all ills. Okay. Oh, all right. that helps so, a lot. Okay. Except it introduces one new ill, <laughs> which I'll talk to you about later. Okay. <laughs> yeah. There's another. There's another fun Internet Explorer thing. And it, it removes what it thinks of as redundant spaces. 
So if you have a space before the script and a space after the script, it thinks, oh, the script's not going to have any content, and it'll remove one of the other levels. And later, when I go and put the map in there, the one in front of it is gone. Uh, so there's another issue that we're going to jam. Yeah, with. okay. So, but there are ways around that. Too. All right, so marking, math and, marking the mathematics, the way I want you to do it, the way we, we want to do it for Sage, is to use these script tags instead. So if you put the scripts around it, it fixes this stuff. Um, the inline one is script type math tech. The, the uh, display mode one is script type math tech, semicolon mode equals display. This is a valid uh, mind type. Okay. So you can add in additional data like that if you need to. Um, and uh, you put span class math tech preview in front of one of these if you want to have something there up until the math gets displayed. This fixes the, the uh, space problem. If there's non-space, if it's if there's actual content there, and it doesn't have to be anything to do with the actual math, it could just be the word math, and then <laughs> you'll see math, 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 and eventually those will all get turned into the actual math. Okay. So that's a way around that. All right, so here's an example that has a raw configuration here um, that I load the input jack, the output jack. There's no preprocessors involved here at all. This is this is the sort of minimal math jacks configuration. I'm using tech input, HTML output. We don't pass it a config in this case because the config is there. And here is the, uh, the script preview. I put the same equation in as what's going to get produced. The script type math tech. This is an inline one. Script uh, preview. I just put the word math here because this is a longer piece. And that's to show you it doesn't have to have anything to do with here. But it could be, for example, an image. If you had preprocessors that were producing images, you could have the image there and have math jacks come along and take it out later. Uh, and put one in that's clickable and scalable and all of that. Interact. And then this one is the mode display version. All right, defining tech macros. This is something you all are going to want to do. You can include new macros in the configuration. Uh, each of the different components gets its own configuration block. Here we saw earlier a tech to jacks configuration block. There's a con tech configuration block. We just put these all together in one big configuration. And tech has a macros thing, and in there is uh, RR gets replaced by slash BFR in braces. Bold is uh, BF number one, and it has one parameter to it. So you can add in macros that are just like slash def type macros. Uh, uh, as long as you don't have a template, if it, you know, if you had a, a def that had other macros as part of the template for it, it's harder to do. There's another way to do that. But this is for the, the simple, you know, just a bunch of uh, parameters passed to it. And you can put as many of those in as you want. Uh, other options for the tech input are linked there. It's also possible to register hooks into MathJax to hook into various uh, actions that are being done. For example, extensions are loaded as needed. So the AMS math environments are not may not be loaded initially. They come in later. If you need to modify them in some way, override one of those definitions, don't you can't do it up front because when that gets loaded in, they'll wipe out your modifications. So there's a hook that you can use to get to that. So Suppose we wanted to redefine the triple, the quadruple integral symbol to actually use the Unicode code point for that. The AMS macros actually define this in, as macros, and it builds it up. Uh, but you could actually call on the, the, uh, the code point for it. Here, we would do a configuration that includes a different command, MathJack register startup hook. This, it, oh, I'm, I'm clicking through it, yeah. Uh, the, uh, now this is the signal that's being waited for. Tech AMS math is ready. When, when AMS math gets loaded, this function will get called. And we get the input jack, and we call the tech macro command to replace this with that. Okay, So that would override the macro that was in that package. And there are lots of different signals for things, actions that go on. They can happen sort of in arbitrary orders. So you, to synchronize with math jacks, one of the ways to do it is by these hooks. Math test provides many single signals. Here's the documentation about signals and hooks. Here's a example, live example of monitoring the signals that are going on in MathJax. Here's that page with the uh, quadratic equation. This is the signal history that has gone. This was built as the page came in. Um, if we reload it, 
you know, it's too fast to, to see it, but we're beginning, we're configuring. This is a message I put out actually in my configuration here to say, here I am. Um, the onload handler started here. We're loading JAX and extensions. The JAX and extensions come in asynchronously, so you can see that the beginning and the, and the ends are, are intertwined. Um, type setting is occurring. Um, the uh, processing is, is getting started. The various JAX are being configured when they're required. They don't get called up until somebody uses them. Uh, these get defined. Here are the new math elements showing up on the page. Uh, we're ending it and everything is done. And I, and I had queued a message to, to occur at the end of the startup process. And you can look at the source of this page to see how that works. I also made specific hooks for new math messages and said new math element one, element two, element three, and that was the tech code that was there. And these are CSS IDs that I could go and grab the HTML from those if I needed to or modify it. So so there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes that you can hook into to make things more interactive if you need to. Um, it's, uh, it, it is only mildly documented at the moment, so you know your best job maybe to talk to me about it if you want to do that kind of stuff. And it's, some of it's still in flux. So it, MathJax has this kind of API. It has a much richer API for interaction than did JS Math as calls for processing, reprocessing the page and individual equations in the page and changing the, value, the content of an individual equation, um, locating the equations and stepping through them, updating and replacing them, all these signals and cues and callbacks and so forth for synchronization. And this is critical stuff because MathJax does all of this loading of files which is asynchronous. And so if you just make one of its calls to even to typeset something, that may be an asynchronous action because it may be that that equation uses a feature that's not loaded yet. And MathJax will stop doing that, load the file, and JavaScript goes on, because JavaScript does not have a wait function. And so everything has to be done with callbacks, and you'll, your routine will return to you before the math is actually ready. So you've got to do everything through callbacks and queues and, and, and things to make sure it's happening synchronously. This is one of the things. If it only had a wait command, my life would have been much easier. It doesn't. And so we've got this complicated mess that you all have to deal with if you want to synchronize. So we had to do this when we were uh, loading a new cell in the notebook, when it produced JS math or uh, uh, mathematics that needed typesetting. MathJax has already run on the page. It's done. It thinks it's done. So you have to tell MathJax, go back and look again, see if there's new stuff that's shown up. So we queued a command to be done. And that command could be queued while MathJax is running other stuff, and it will eventually get to it. But our call returns immediately, and we go on to do other processing before the math is done. So you've got to queue these up so they don't, they don't clobber something that's happening uh, uh, with MathJax at the time. So it's a complicated and somewhat subtle thing, and I have to look it up all the time when I'm doing it. It's always harder than it should be. But at least there are some tools there to, to make it work. And that's one of the core pieces is the signaling and queuing stuff. That was one of the early parts of the event. It's pretty solid. I, that we've been using that for three years now. And I haven't had to modify that in a while. All right, synchronizing. I've talked about this. Files are loaded asynchronously. You have to synchronize with a, there's a queuing mechanism. You can queue events. Make sure that MathJax finishes its other stuff before you do it. If you go out and say, process the page, and you started to ask it to process the page again before it had finished, it's going to be in a race condition processing pieces that were already queued to be processed. So you've got to, you've got to do this stuff a little bit carefully. You can read about the queues. Um, here's some examples, live examples of this happening. This is being generated uh, on the fly and being reprocessed when I hit this you know, next example. The code for this, you can look at. It's coming and you can see how that's done. So it's replacing, this one is, calling the MathJax API to say change the equation that's at this location and it automatically reprocesses as you do that. Here's a slightly different one. This one uh, allows us to sort of display the equation a little at a time. This one is actually not using the API directly. This has a, uh, a uh, in this source here you can see CSS ID step one. So this is actually labeling a sub-piece of the equation as having an ID. There's CSS in there originally that has them all hidden. The next button simply you know, changes, looks up the step one element and changes its visibility. 
And so this is a you know, this is sort of a, a cheap way of getting interaction. The, the equation is actually all there, just most of it's hidden ori originally. So CSS ID is part of the metrics API? Mm -hmm. It's part of the math it's part of the tech extensions to to the uh, to the uh, input jack for tech. And and MathML has IDs because they're actual elements. And that's the way that the tech input jacks get you to that internal MathML uh, feature. And there are a few other extensions like that to get you things in MathML that tech just doesn't have. And then I can use it with jQuery or anything You can use it with jQuery or anything else. Now what you'll get if the HTML CSS element is there will be some span with holy god awful crap inside of it. It's not actually a MathML element. If we were using the native MathML output jack, to be honest, MathML element. You've got to be, you know, only certain things can be done to this after the fact. You would not want to do something that changed in size because it will not reformat automatically. If you're going to be changing the content of the math in a way that changes its layout, you should give it a new text string and have it, re and have it reprocess it. That's the better way to do that. So there is some interaction uh, and you know this kind of stuff you can do, but I would not, tr you should not try to replace the element with something, for example, that'll screw up the placement entirely. Um, there are hooks for the href command, so you can make links in here. Um, there's uh, style ones you can add, you can add style onto it. You could put, you know, board bounding boxes and stuff like that onto this. So it's possible to do some stuff like that. But you don't want to do it after the fact. You're going to put a bounding box that's going to change, it may change the spacing. You know, put a padding on it, something like that. You need to do that so the map jack lays it out properly. But yeah, there's some of that. And we still need to work on that. People are interested in doing the dynamic math and want to work on figuring out what do you, what do we need to have available. Uh, you know, we're not. I'm not entirely sure what all the things should be. All right, MathML is the other possibility. You can use MathML for the input. Uh, just include the MathML in the body of the document. No special delimiters needed. Load the configuration file that includes the MathML input jack. That kitchen sink one at the top was one of them, and the one that started out MML is the other one. Um, no special MIME types are needed on this. No XHTML. This is into raw math. This is HTML, not XHTML. You don't have to worry about special namespaces. You don't have to set up namespaces or all the rest of the stuff that made this intolerably hard and, and almost impossible because Firefox and Internet Explorer's Math Player plugin did not agree on how this worked. Uh, and now you don't have to worry about any of that. MathJax takes care of it for you. Uh, you can read about the support there. So here's an example where this is actually MathML underlying this. And here is the file now. Uh, we have a configuration file that's the MathML input one, and here is plain old MathML inside here. This is a inline equation, and mode equals display. Oh, this is old. That should be. This will work. That's deprecated now. Display equals block is the preferred uh, one for that, and that's the MathML uh, for the quadratic equation. And MathJax will find this, convert it to its internal format, and display it either as the HTML that we saw, or using the MathML, native MathML uh, in the browser if it exists. Uh, so here is the MathML playground. You can you know, include uh, equations and test out the various MathML features that you want to here. Again, you can switch the mode that it's in, uh, the SV. This could be done in SVG or the native if we wanted to. Let me show you native output in Firefox. This is Firefox, that's the uh, HTML output, and here is native MathML output. So that's passed through the, to the uh, to, that's, that would be a lot faster. I personally find it somewhat uglier. And, and Firefox's implementation of MathML is not complete, and it has bugs, and a number of things are not so good here. So if you want, the speed, you're going to be trading off some of the quality to do that and some of the consistency. If you want to have your page look the same for everybody, you choose a configuration that uses the HTML. It's slow. People can still switch using the contextual menu item if they want to override what you've done. But uh, 
that's the trade-off people need to decide about. Do you want the speed and less precise possible um, uh, issues of errors in there, or do you want uh, uh, the, the highest quality rendering you can get? All right. Caveats for including math. ML. There are just like uh, the pre -pro you could include the math ML inside script tags and solve all the problems. But if you're using the preprocessor like we were in the page there where the math ML is just raw HTML, really, you do have to be careful. One gotcha is the self-closing tags in math ML uh, need to be made into begin end tags because the browsers do not maintain that little slash you put at the end. It'll just have an open tag and then a bunch of stuff will become a child in that element. And it really messes it up. Uh, so you've got to be careful. It'll process it, but it'll produce a, a completely wrong DOM. Uh, so you don't want to say M space with 1M close. You need to say M space with 1M close. Now I've got some heuristics in there to try to undo the damage. So a lot of stuff will work if you just paste this in anyway, but it's not guaranteed in a lot of places where it screws up. So don't use it. The other one is that you should use numeric entities rather than named entities because the browsers don't know about a lot of the entities. And so you've got to be a little careful. Use, uh, you know, hash uh, x222b, not integral. Uh, MathJax has a table of those things, but the browsers are inconsistent about how they treat these. These will get processed before MathJax gets to see them. In some browsers, if you had, for example, um, not in, they will see the and not and turn it into a not sign and leave the in out there and MathJax will not see an entity because it's been partially translated already before MathJax gets its hands on it. So don't use the named ones, use the numeric ones uh, for safety's sake. All right, so those are the caveats there. But again, if you put them in the, in the script tags, you can do whatever you want. Here is my last page uh, for Jason, who is no longer here, um, who uh, saw a, a JS math-based editor that I, I had as, a, as just a uh, uh, sort of a uh, bravado uh, exhibition uh, in a lecture I gave three or four years ago. Uh, I had spent a week before the thing in the road bill editor where you could just type in this stuff and you know it'll, it'll do this kind of stuff. And, uh, and uh, it was just to say you could do this kind of interactive editing and we ought to write an editor for that. And he's been after me ever since then to finish it and I have it. And I had a student work on it for a while so this is a little better than what we had before. But it's a really, really hard problem to decide exactly what you want to do. Um, you know, if you if you have a square here, for example, I use the up arrow at this point, where am I going? Am I going into the square? Am I going into the line above and so forth? So that kind of stuff, what do you do? What is, what is right of this location? Um, is it over at the other end of the thing? Is it at the beginning of that guy? Is it down here? You know, so there is a lot of stuff that is not at all obvious what you should do. Could you? Could you sort of maybe define things to be whatever they happen to be in and make a choice, such as the equation editor in Microsoft Word or in Mathematica or Maple or something? I mean, because there sorry, are many, I'm not, I'm not there sure are at least three, four yeah. or five programs I can think of that have come up with answers to, as I think, every single one of those questions. Um, have the same behavior. Maybe you yeah, can choose one. they all do the same thing? I don't know, but yeah. you can choose one know. of them. Say, yeah. our main competitor, like yeah. Mathematica. Yeah, you certainly could. You could choose what you were doing. The, the student who was working with me was actually interested in behavior research, and so he was asking people to look at this to to, to see what they were successful with and what they weren't successful with. But, I would just uh, emulate Mathematica exactly or something. Yeah. Well, but Mathematica doesn't have this kind of editor. Doesn't? No, well, doesn't it have a palette? It has. It certainly could have palettes. Palettes is not a no, 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 possibility. Like like this. Exactly. Part. Can't you can type this math and keyboard. But you're typing a you're typing a, a long text. No, it's like, like this. It's like this. Oh, okay. Yeah, so so I, so I, I don't use Mathematica. I think Maple so. does. Mathematica yeah. does. Math okay, well, then, 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 equation then, editor. Then some decisions have been made by people. You could always you could do that. Um, it doesn't have a click and point thing yet, but that can be done. Um, 
So I had this just really to, to show Jason. I, I took a data, convert the old one into this, uh, and it, uh, uh, you know, producing tech and so forth. Out of that. I noticed this seems to not be in the version that you post on the Sage website. I, I did not put it into there. I don't want it to go. I don't want it out. <laughs> I see. So if you, it's really if not, you, it's nowhere near ready. So if you don't work 